My name is Martin Blazer. I'm a professor at Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey, and I'm uh, the director of the Center for Advanced Biotechnology and Medicine and professor of medicine and pathology and laboratory medicine. So I'm here at the poster area, as you can see, um, with uh, Professor Martin Blazer, and I'm about to ask him a few questions to know about a little bit more about his own session and a little bit more about what he's doing in a day to day basis. So let's start with the first. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your session? In my session, I'm going to talk about our work for the last 20 years about um, relating changes in the human microbiome to the development of all the or many of the diseases that are a very big problem in the world today, like obesity, asthma allergies, autoimmune diseases, neurodevelopmental diseases, and providing evidence that there is a relationship uh, between how the microbiome is changing and, and how these diseases are occurring. And I guess you will be bringing both your experiences from being a physician, right, and from being a microbiologist? You know, I, I can't really separate them because uh, it's, it's, just, it's just me. Uh, but uh, I'll be talking about evidence that from other people's work and work that we've done over the years that kind of build this this hypothesis that I that I've been working on for all these years. Mm -hmm. And in your research, have you you know microbiome? It composes of very big array of bacteria. Let's say, have you focused on some specific ones in your career, or is it general? looking at the general microbiome. Yeah, in the early part of my career, I, uh, I focused on specific bacteria. But for the last 20 years or so, I've been focusing on the microbiome in its totality. Mm. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of more ecology than, uh, you know, studying pathogenic microbes. And are you going to, uh, I saw your um, description on the session, Anna, and I saw that you uh, were going to talk about the influence on, of antibiotics on uh, the microbiome as well, right? You know, one, one of the points is that we, we have all grown up in the antibiotic era. We, we are in the antibiotic era, which has been going on for about 75 years. And everybody, the person on the street, knows that antibiotics are wonderful drugs, and they are. But our work and that of others have, have found that there are unexpected costs to antibiotics, and I, I'm, I'm going to focus on that. Mm -hmm. And as you described in your title, two-edged sword, sword of antibiotics, it's yeah. like you described it, climate change in miniature, right? When they invented the, in, the internal combustion engine, no one had any idea that every time you turned on your engine, the ice cap in Greenland would melt a little, yeah. but it seems to be true. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that every time we take an antibiotic course, uh, whether for good reasons or bad reasons, it, it's melting our microbiome a little too. Ah, nice, nice parallel there. And I've seen that you also um, uh, wrote a book, right, about uh, titled "Missing Microbes." Missing microbes. Yeah, that's. Uh, I wrote that book about ten years ago. It was published about seven years ago. And um, it's now actually in uh, 20 languages. And um, it's, it's the development of the story of, of how uh, we're, we have been losing our ancestral bacteria, which is really important in young children, because that's when the microbiome is forming. Mm -hmm. and, and how that predisposes to some of the diseases that have been you know, the very important rising diseases. Mm -hmm. And I guess this link with... Um microbiome diseases, it goes with um, our innate immune system, right? Well, or... it, it, it's, it involves innate immunity, it, it involves adaptive immunity, it involves metabolism, it involves uh, neurodevelopment. And what can you say? You wrote this book, you said, 10 years ago. Does it still apply to now? That, that's what I believe. Uh, yep. I, I believe that the theory is, is even stronger than it was 10 years ago. 
I think I think the uh, the general outlines were there, but now we're providing we're filling in many of the details. And just a general question now about uh, this congress. I know you you flew from the U.S. and uh, perhaps this is your first in-person conference for a while. Or? Yeah. Yeah, first time in almost two years. Oh, and how how do you find it so far? Oh, it's it's great to be at a conference. I mean, I've like everybody, I've participated in a lot of Zoom conferences, and that's been very good and it's very efficient, <clears throat> and it's a lot easier on the body than crossing the Atlantic Ocean. But um, but you know, just in the poster session, uh, I just started talking to people, and I learned so much that I wouldn't have learned otherwise, and maybe I gave some people some new ideas. So that's what happens at a conference, is it's about the, uh, it's the exchange of ideas. Great, I mean, that's all the questions I had for you today. I don't know if you want to add anything, a few last words, maybe some advice to people attending these kind of conferences. Well, I think what's really nice about this conference is that there's a lot of energy here, a lot of young people, students and young scientists, they're, they're all, they're blooming, they're showing their, their work. Uh, I'm looking beyond you, I'm looking at these posters, there's a lot of great science here. Yeah, thank you so much for your time and answers and I wish you a great rest of your conference, a great talk as we are going to head soon into your session, right? And yeah. That's all for today. Thank, Thank you very much.